Leinster, what are you expecting? Um, although they'll have a number of internationals away, they're still a very strong team. And uh, I don't need to tell you the last time we played against them, we conceded uh, seven tries and really um, were embarrassed really by our performance. So you know we, we have to improve massively from that performance uh, in Heiden Cup. Go out there and, and um, make sure we show a good account of ourselves. And it's a game we, we can win. Obviously, they are missing probably their, uh, six or seven of their frontline players and, and their key players. And they'll obviously bring Sexton back and Owen Redden a half back, which makes a bit of a difference to them. But um, physically, they're as physical a side as we played this year in those two matches. Um, we play them down here the first game of the season and they'll have a similar side to, to that team probably. So we know we can beat against Leinster. We just uh, failed miserably in the two uh, Heineken games. That, those two games are interesting because a lot of people would expect the team to go completely off the rails after performances like that, but it didn't happen. Does that say something about what you've got here at the moment? Um, I think the young guys um, <coughs> that came in after that uh, we picked up a few injuries that day in the two games. Young guys came in, were given opportunities in the LV Cup, and they took those chances. And uh, we 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 kind of turned the corner a little bit in terms of getting results. We'd, we'd come off the back of a few defeats. Obviously, the two Leinster matches, in particular, we lost the Ospreys as well, and we were in a bit of a corner. But we managed to start winning games that we'd lost in the previous few weeks, and. Um, Getting a habit of winning is, is the same as losing habit. You know, you you gain that confidence when you win tight games. We manage that for uh, three or four games after uh, after Christmas. You know, starting with the Dragons match and the young players that came through, um, really you know stood up and were counted in those games. And I think uh, that's held us in good stead now when we have a number of senior players out with injuries. Um, you played in big European games for this organisation. Um, semi-finals, quarter-finals. How painful was that last experience in Leicester? And do you think it was a watershed for this team? I think um, in terms of where we are at, I think it was a little bit uh, a little bit harsh on us. I, I don't think we were as bad as the scoreline reflected. I think we, we managed to uh, implode a little bit in the game. And... Um, you know, we've looked back a, new, a number of times this week, in particular, at some of our uh, ineptitude in both in attack and defence, and, and realised that a lot of things we that they they were able to do were because of our errors, and, and uh, both in attack and defence. So we maybe weren't as bad as we 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 uh, thought we were that day. Although the scoreline would suggest we were awful, and you know it felt a pretty miserable day out there, but. Uh, I think we've turned a corner a little bit, as I said, after Christmas, and uh, we picked up some good results. Um, and I think the young boys have, have come through and, and shown that they can uh, perform at the highest level. And, and this week is another big test because, as I said, Leinster are full of quality internationals, and we probably, on paper, would be um, would be underdogs going out there. Realistically, what do you want to achieve with this team this year? Um, we've we've got an opportunity in uh, in. Uh, a few months in Toulon, which is a one-off cup match, and we know we can uh, we can win those big games. Um, but our most important thing is to get some consistency in the Magnus League and make sure that we qualify automatically for Europe mm. next season. Uh, and it, it's difficult in this period because games are a bit sporadic. You know, they're they're, they're, they're spread out over a period of time. Where uh, if you do pick up a couple of wins back to back. You know, you can't play week in, week out. It's sort of two weeks off and then another game and then maybe two or three weeks off. So we've got to keep training well and making sure that we uh, when we do take the park. Magnus League is, is the most important thing now. That The Toulon fixture is, as I say, down the line a little bit and, and that's a bit of a sidetrack, but you know, a great one to have. But our uh, our focus has got to be um, the Magnus League now and climbing the table. I have ambition there, so it would be just to make sure you qualify for Europe next season. Wouldn't it? Oh, at this stage, yeah. I mean, we put ourselves. We put playoffs or anything like that. Well, I mean, w mathematically it's possible, and you know, but we need to start picking up points and making sure that we we uh, not only get results but start to pick up some. If we can get wins, then try and turn those into bonus point wins, and and then who knows? We've still got eight or nine league matches left, uh, and 
even though you look at the table, we're second run bottom. You know, a couple of wins takes you into sort of fifth, fourth place possibly. So there's not that much in it. If you can beat sides that are in the same position as you, then you start to move up the table. And I think that's important that we just keep improving and trying to just keep chipping away at those wins. And I think we'll see that gradual progression. And then maybe with three or four games to go, if we're in a position to to realistically look at the playoffs, then obviously that would be fantastic. But we put ourselves in a difficult position now and we've got to make sure we get out of that. Are you at the stage, Simon, where it's become almost a dog fight between three sides? It's a silly drums of matches. Yeah, it's a bit early, I think, for that. I, th I think we haven't done ourselves any favours, but um, I think we, we're we capable enough to, to start climbing the table, as I say, to say, you know, it's, uh, there, there are still many games and many points to play for. Um, you know, the most important thing is that in, with three or four games to go, we're not still in yeah. in in that position, and we're not still in a, a so-called dogfight for that last European spot. You said you're an old man now, my <laughs> Tell me about the young Turk, Mr. Robbins, and what a Wales got on their hands there. Um, well, his, his performances speak for themselves. I, 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 mean, I think a few of us down here were surprised he hadn't. Um, had any recognition in the autumn because uh, Matthew was injured and you know and hadn't played as much rugby as uh, as uh, Ken. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I see him as a, a, you know, potentially playing for Wales you know, for a number of years. Uh, he's still young, you know, he's only yeah. 22, 23. So it's not you know, for a front rower. Yeah, you know, that's um, very young compared to me. It's very young anyway. So, <laughs> but you know, he has all. He has everything. He has. Um, he, has a, he, he offers an impact off the bench if he's not selected to start. Uh, and um, his throwing in has, has improved hugely this year. Uh, his carrying game is, is second to none, I think, in that position in Wales at the moment. So, um, you know, he, he's got everything, really. I think, you know, if, um, if he can keep working on his scrummaging and, and making sure that physically... Uh, in those tight situations, he can compete with the best. Then, you know, there should be no reason why Wales wouldn't pick him on a regular basis. But uh, is this weekend an opportunity for him, Simon? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, whatever happens with the Welsh hookers at the moment, you know, Matthew's going to be out for probably for a couple of weeks. Um, Gareth Williams, I'm not sure is is he struggling? Yeah. So it's it's you know it's a great opportunity for Ken to show showcase himself. Against a pretty strong scrummaging unit, you know, and, and against a good side in Leinster. So, if he plays well and, and does his job like he's been doing all year for us, then he um, he must be in the mix. And you know, I think he's just got to try and focus on that, not worry too much about what happens next week. More about performance on Saturday, and I think he's aware of that. How important has he been to Smiler's success? Um, yeah, I think he's been very important. I think it's it's great to have that healthy competition within the team. Um, I think Cardiff Blues probably have that with uh, Rhys, Thomas and, and Gareth. Similarly, the um, the Ospreys with Hugh Bennett and, and Hibbard. So it's 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 great uh, that Wales have a number of quality hookers and, and similarly it's great that we have that here at the Scarlets, that they're able to push each other and, and uh, raise the bar. You know, Matthew showed in the summer that uh, he was the number one hooker in uh, in Europe, and but you know Ken Ken aspires to that as well, and I think it shows in training and in the way Ken plays that he wants to get to the top. So it's uh, it's good, it's healthy, and and uh, I think Smiler's probably uh, benefited from that competition. Who's the boys really taking their chance and they took? Yeah, McCusker. Rob McCusker has been excellent. Josh has been good. Uh, you know, um, we're lucky with Dave there as well that, that he hasn't missed many games, so it means that he, there's a bit of stability in between those two players. Whoever's playing six and seven has meant that whether it's Johnny or Richie or Josh playing at seven and Rob playing at six or Josh playing at six. So it's it's um, it's great to have those players coming through and, you know, you kind of look at them now and, you know, it's probably where I was 10, 11 years ago. Any <laughs> Senator Dark in the back? Um, yeah, Dav will hopefully be started doing a bit of skill work now. Um, we're hoping to see him back in sometime in March, you know, and, and it'd be fantastic for him. You know, he's, he's got uh, he's picked up a few injuries in the last couple of years, so I think he's desperate to to get himself back on the pitch. And with what's going on in the um, Welsh camp, 
you know, there's obviously that for him in the future to uh, <laughs> to uh, you know think about himself as well because you know the World Cup on the horizon. You know, yeah, he was on great form. You know, there's a World Cup next year, and and you know he'll he'll be aiming to get back with us, as I say, hopefully sometime in March. But then look to try and secure one of the you know the touring spots, and then hopefully give him that opportunity to uh, to secure that spot for the for next year for Wales.